Hey everyone, once again welcome back. Before we get started in the stories, I need to give a trigger warning for sexual assault for the first story as well as the final story in this video. As per usual, I'll have timestamps in a pinned comment, and I'll have these stories labeled in case you want to skip over them. And remember, it's the spooky season right now, so be sure to send in your story at southerncannibal.com. I would love to narrate it. All that being said, grab a snack, grab your favorite drink, and let's get into these scary stories. And remember to always stay hungry. Trigger Warning for Sexual Assault I was in high school at the time of this story. For privacy, I'm changing everyone's names in this. For some context, I was a 16-year-old patine girl who's kind of curvy. My friend had texted me on Snapchat that there was a new girl in school and that she had talked to her. She had said the new girl, Emily, wanted to be friends, so she had told her about me. Apparently, we also had some periods together. When the bell rang, I had went over to my first period, and I saw what my friend Kay described Emily as, and I went over to say hi and I told her I'm the girl that Kay had mentioned. She said hi back, and the teacher made her do the awkward introduce yourself in front of the entire class thing. I know a lot of teachers don't let you pick your seats, but this teacher did, so she had told Emily to go sit wherever, and of course, she sat next to me. I didn't mind, and I thought it was normal. She was kinda quiet at first, but then opened up, and we immediately bonded, and I felt very comfortable with her. A few days had passed, and she literally only wanted to talk to me, only wanted to walk with me, and only wanted to be friends with me. That was the first red flag, but I didn't notice it at first. I just thought that she was shy, very shy, as well as awkward, and just wanted to stick by me. The second one was that every time I talked to her or even asked some kind of a question, she would give me a hurt look and then stare daggers at the person I was talking to. She would act as if I had betrayed her by talking to someone else. Again, I dismissed it. Our friendship was fine, and I only thought of her as a friend, but she had other ideas. She started telling people that I was hers and that we were together, and how I would send her really lewd and sexual photos, as well as talk about sexual stuff with her like BDSM. I had no clue about any of this, and she was just telling random students even in different grades. Kay and a few other distant friends claimed that they didn't know this either when I found this out. We had gone through a whole school year like this, and every time I set boundaries, like for her to not touch me or grope me, as a joke, she would stop for like a week and then continue. Joke being her words. I was getting so tired of doing this shit, but it was almost summer and I really didn't want any drama, especially with her. She was a very violent person and she got into a lot of fights and that's what got her kicked out of her last school. Well, summer had rolled around and I was having a great time. Emily texted me a lot and asked if we could hang out, but I would just say I'm busy and shit like that to not hang out with her. I wanted to really make it clear that I wasn't interested in being friends with her without the confrontation. Well, around this time, I had gotten a boyfriend. His name is Matt for the sake of privacy, and we had talked a lot during the end of the school year, and we had started dating in summer. Eventually, I had sent him nudes of myself. Now, I know this was very stupid and I shouldn't have done that, but I felt like I could trust him and we loved each other. Things were going really great with him until my friend Kay went to a party and saw him cheating on me with some cheerleader from our school. As you can imagine, I was very heartbroken and I broke up with him and I told him I hated him for that. Now, I was very vulnerable at this point and I needed someone to talk to. So I went to Emily because, well, Kay isn't the best with comforting people. I think it's because of the household she grew up in, but I don't blame her. Anyways, 
I had started talking to Emily more and more, then school came around. When I came in, everyone was looking at me differently. They were staring at their phones and then they would look at me as if I was a piece of meat. This had made me super uncomfortable, and so many people asked if I could send them more photos like that, and when I asked like what, they had then showed me all of the nude photos I had sent Matt. I could literally feel my world crumble and crash down all around me, and I felt like I needed to throw up. I instantly called my mom, and she picked me up. While on the car ride, she was calling the principal and yelling at her for letting something like this be spread around in our school and my mother then told me that I would be doing online school from then on. I really hated it, but it was better than going to school and risk getting assaulted or made fun of. Me and Kay would still talk, but she had started to become very distant and not associate with me anymore. A few months later, I was finally adjusted to this whole online school thing. I didn't go outside anymore or hang out with anyone, and it was very depressing and it made me want to die. Then my mom comes in with the news. She told me she was going out on a vacation with her new boyfriend and that she wouldn't be back for four days. She told me not to have any parties, but that I could invite some friends. I only had two close friends, Kay and Emily, but since Kay didn't want to talk, I invited Emily over. We were talking and chatting and playing video games, and she was actually acting pretty normal this time. I thought that she had changed and had gotten help from groping me and acting so weird. She left a little later than expected, and I was left feeling happy that I at least had someone to talk to. A few hours of playing video games go by, and it's about 2.43 in the morning, and I'm tired as shit at this point. I go to bed early, when I wake up to what sounds like glass shattering, and it sounded like it was coming from the kitchen. I jumped up, and I took out my phone and started dialing 911. I told them that I think someone's in my house, and I told them where I lived very quietly. I then hung up because I had heard their footsteps make their way to my room. I covered my breath, and I started silently crying and praying to God. I can now hear the intruder search my room very aggressively, shoving all of my things to the floor, and searching under the bed. I was trying to shuffle my way more into the back, and they must have heard me, because then they walked over to the closet. I felt like I was going to die right in that moment, that this was my last day of me being alive, and that I would never ever see my mother again. The intruder opened it, and I was shocked. I couldn't say anything at first, but I tried asking if it was actually Emily. I was balled up in the corner, and then all of a sudden, she grabs my feet and then drags me out of the closet. I was crying, and I was so terrified. I asked her what she wanted, and she said that she was probably going to go to jail for what she's about to do, but that what's done is done, and since she's going to jail, she has to do what she always wanted to do. I was very confused by all of this. That is, until she then slid down my pants and shoved her fingers down there. I was trying to get her off of me, but she was a bit on the heavier side, and I'm very petite. I was grabbing random objects off the floor and chucking it at her, and I was screaming for help. When the police barged into my room and tackled Emily to the ground, I was so fucking traumatized and horrified. I quickly slid up my pants as an officer approached me and asked what had happened, and I had to give my statement. I was crying profusely, but I had to go through with it and write down my statement. Before the officers left, they told me they'd call me back and they let me know what to do from there. I called my mom and I told her everything that happened, and I started sobbing again, fully taking everything in. I was so fucking traumatized, and still am. I was so glad that the police showed up when they did because she really could have done something to me much worse, and thank God that didn't happen. She was arrested, and I pressed charges. I later found out more shit she had done when I had told Kay, and then she told the people at school the brief version of it, and they had told her even more shit that she had done. What she did to me has probably scarred me for life. 
but I'm really grateful that it didn't get much worse than what she did, because it really could have. This is a long one, but this happened to me at the end of COVID restriction time. Some details have to remain anonymous or vague, but this is still an ongoing case. I was out with my brother in the early hours of the morning, just as the shops and stores began to open, so the parking lot was nearly empty. It should also be noted that the place we went to had a lot of little shops you could go into, and was very convenient if you didn't want to drive all the way out to the mall. I'd went to a nearby Starbucks to get some coffee, while he had popped into a hobby store just opposite to me, and I could still see him from the window. It should also be noted that we both Ubered there, so we didn't have a car. It was at this time then I noticed a man in the parking lot, just staring at me. At the time, I didn't think much of it, as I was used to people staring at me and possibly recognizing me from some small-time modeling that I did at that point. I didn't have any alarm bells going off quite yet, and I put it out of my mind as I drank my coffee and waited outside the Starbucks for my brother. Shortly after, my brother came outside to join me. We ordered our Uber and decided to wait in the parking lot so we could see better when it arrived. It was at this point that the man who had been staring at me earlier suddenly walked up to us and began making conversation. Now, this happened some time ago, and some of the details are honestly just really blurry, as this was a very traumatic incident for me. But the strange man basically said, Hey, how are you? It's been a while. And he made contact with my brother, as if it was him that he was talking to. My brother works in a retail store as a store rep, so he instantly assumed it was a customer that he just didn't recognize. You know, because of how friendly this man seemed with him. They in fact began talking about my brother's work, so it made sense at this point. Now, this was when I made the biggest mistakes that I ever could have made. I took out my phone and began posting my Starbucks selfies that I'd taken in the shop, and the man noticed. Now from here, things are kind of a blur, but the man got way too close to me and it started directing his attention towards me. He then said, Oh, you look very nice in that. You're a very pretty girl. I suddenly got goosebumps, as I then realized that he was watching me on my phone. Alarm bells went off in my head. It was then when my brother realized something was off with this man, and we had both lied and said our ride was here. Which was obviously not true. Our Uber had canceled on us. But my brother didn't want this man to see us ordering another one in front of him. But the man didn't let us go. He actually stopped right in front of us and had asked me for my contact information. He invited me for breakfast and had asked what my name was. How old I was. All the while ignoring my brother like he didn't even exist anymore. For all he knew this was my boyfriend. But none of that seemed to bother him. I always thought that something like this would never have happened to me, that I'd be a lot smarter about it. But until it actually happens to you, it's terrifying, and you suddenly just can't think straight. I lied to the man, and I said my name was something like Rose, as it was all I could think of at the time. This man then looked me straight in the eyes, and then smiled as he told me, Really? Because that's not the name that it said on your profile. He had seen my real name, my real name from my Facebook as I was stupidly posting. That's basically when my brother grabbed me by the arm and we ran inside the convenience store right next to us, and my brother then screamed for security that this guy was harassing us. The man ran the second we started to make a commotion. To make a very long story short, the police were called and statements were made. I later found out that this man was actually wanted for assault on multiple women in the area, and that he was also likely on drugs and other substances. I'm very lucky that worse didn't happen to me. I don't post anything publicly anymore, and I'm much more aware of my surroundings. I was very, very stupid back then, and I'm not proud of how naive I was. Please everyone, 
Don't make the same mistakes that I did. And please be safe out there. This happened to me last week. I was at my friend's house and it had gotten pretty late, so I decided to go home at this point. It's usually pretty safe to take the bus home, and it wasn't that late. Anyways, I go to say bye to my friend, and she sees me to the door. I start to walk to the bus stop, and it's like a five minute walk. I noticed a guy walking on the opposite side of where I was walking, so I didn't think anything of it. I then put on my earpods, and I wait for the bus. About five minutes later, the guy who I had seen on the opposite side is now right behind me. I look up and he just smiles at me, and he starts trying to talk to me, and me not wanting to be rude, started to make small talk. I take out one of my earpods and I put it in the case. The guy proceeds to tell me his real name, age, and that he's attending school, and that he's new around here. But I had gotten a bad vibe around him. He begins to ask me questions like what my name is, my age, and if I was a student myself. To get him off my back, I had told him my name in the school I attend. Big mistake, because as soon as he knew my school, there was a huge grin on his face, and he then tells me that he's attending there in the spring, and that we should meet up there. I was getting uncomfortable, and kept looking out for the bus, and thankfully, it was right down the street. That's when I then told him that my bus was arriving, and I had to go. He told me that he would give me a ride home, but I politely refused, and he had seemed irritated with that. He told me that it was no trouble, and that his house was only like 10 minutes away. I was beginning to get irritated and mad that he wouldn't leave me alone. I told him no, and before I got on the bus, he had actually grabbed my phone and called his number to get mine. I was really pissed off by this, and I grabbed my phone back and got on the bus. On my way home, this guy had actually sent me a text saying that he'll call me just to make sure that I get home safely. I just ignored the text and pretty much forget all about it, until almost reaching my stop. That's when I got another text from him that then said, Ah, I see you made it to your stop safely. I had a face of pure terror when he had sent me a photo of me getting off the bus. I immediately called my roommate to meet me at the bus stop just to be safe. She told me to wait for her there and she would be there shortly. I felt really uneasy and I was looking around to see if maybe he was there, but I didn't see anyone. I was so thankful that right at that moment, I had then saw my roommate's car. As soon as I got in, I broke down in tears, showing her the text and telling her what happened. She calmed me down and she told me that everything would be okay. But as soon as we got home, I received yet another text from the same guy. This is what it said. Ah, I see that you're home now. That's good, baby girl. That's good. This guy had actually sent a photo of my roommate and I walking into our apartment complex, and I was so scared. He then sent me another text that then said, I'll see you later on, baby. And as you can imagine, I was terrified to go to sleep at this point, now that this guy knows where I live and he knows who I stay with. As of right now, I haven't seen him around, but I know that this won't be the last time I see him. If I get any updates, I'll be sure to let you know and I'll send them in. Stay safe, everyone, and thank you all for taking the time to listen to my story. I need to provide a trigger warning for sexual assault, rape, and mental abuse. I'm a male. I'm 22 years old and recently something happened in my life that had made me think back to past events. English isn't my first language, so please excuse any mistakes. First, I'm going to tell you a backstory leading up to the events that had happened in my teen years. I have a twin sister. However, during our birth, my mother only expressed love towards her. This resulted in physical and mental abuse and neglect towards me. 
When I was 14, my mother passed away. It was a very confusing time for me, and still is sometimes. After mourning my mother's loss, some of my friends and I formed a group. We would always hang out and talk about our struggles. We had all grown up around a lot of money, and because of our status, we kind of got popular in school. Now, please try and understand, we weren't the type of stuck-up rich kids. We were actually pretty cordial with everyone around us. Here's where the story actually begins. At one of those parties that we used to have, a group of girls came up to me and some of my other guy friends. This wasn't unusual for us, since everybody always tried to talk to us. I had met a girl named Jessica. She was a really nice girl, and we had stayed in contact. Fast forward a few months, and Jessica became part of our friend group. Everyone really liked her because she was really charming and fun to be around. Jessica and I shared everything. We were basically best friends, if not more. Jessica knew about my situation in my past, and she really tried to help me from day to day. She was even there for me when I got diagnosed with schizophrenia. Yeah, all was well for a very long time, but eventually, I had started to notice that Jessica wanted to be, well, too close to me. She started becoming very possessive, even towards my sister, which was extremely weird. My friends and I had talked to her about it multiple times, but she would always act surprised, like she hadn't noticed what she was doing all along. At first, it was pretty believable, but after a few times, we all got pretty sick of it. About half a year later, I had slipped towards rock bottom again. I had stopped taking my medication and instead started doing substances. Whenever we would party, I would be blackout drunk, which sounds so dangerous looking back on it. Well, it started becoming really dangerous when Jessica noticed my problems as well. There were multiple times when she would drag me to a bedroom when we were at a party, knowing I was drunk or high on whatever. I remember when she would have intercourse with me while I was too far gone and way too weak to push her off. She knows that I have trauma related to my abusive mother who did the same sort of things to me. I never told my friends about this because everyone just always seemed happy. Plus, I was convinced that it was my own fault. Jessica started to manipulate me. Whenever I would have meltdowns or episodes, I remember that she would try to convince me that she was my mother figure. She told me she loved me and that she was there to satisfy my needs. Everything in my life just seemed to be upside down, and weirdly, I began to believe her. My sister and friends started to notice it too, but Jessica made sure to shield them out of my life. Anyways, I had been screaming and fighting with my sister on the phone about my substance abuse issues, and I had angrily hung up on her. She and my other friends were on their way to Jessica and I. When I hung up, I had gotten very upset, and on cue, Jessica barged in the room. She comforted me, and she told me I needed a drink, and when I told her I didn't want to touch the bottle, she got angry. Her usual blue-loving eyes almost seemed to have turned a shade of black as she clenched her jaw. She then hit me in the face and said some really hurtful, triggering things to me. She then disappeared in the kitchen eventually coming back with a cup of juice. You at least need to drink something. I figured you only drink alcohol, but fine. Here's some juice. Please make sure you drink all of it, she said, and she then watched me drink the whole cup. After finishing the cup of juice, she had gotten up and left again. After about five minutes, I had started to feel sick. I felt nauseous, and I noticed that I was sweating like crazy. My eyes started to get heavy as I felt like I was now moving in slow motion. My phone rang again, and it was my sister calling me. I tried to pick up the phone, but my vision was blurry. I had heard Jessica return to the room at this point, now seeing me in this state. However, she did nothing to help me, but ripped the phone right out of my hand. She answered in her normal voice in just a switch, 
as I had heard my sister asking about me. That was my chance. I mustered up all the strength in my lungs to call out my sister's name. I then felt a hand pressed firmly against my mouth before I heard my phone being thrown on the ground. Right then, my vision went black. I woke up in a hospital a day later. It was then confirmed that I had been drugged. I had to tell the police everything that happened, and I finally saw my sister after that. Eventually, she told me what happened. She had told me that their car had broke down about 15 minutes within walking distance from the house, and she had called to tell me. When Jessica picked up the phone, she had got a gut feeling that things weren't right. She heard a muffled sound, and she told me she jumped out of the car, took her heels off, and ran home. When she came home, Jessica had been busy trying to drag my body to the basement. I had recovered decently from the experience, and legal action had to be taken because of this. Just a few weeks ago, I had actually gotten news that Jessica was arrested yet again for stalking. All of this happened in my late teen years, and now that a few years have passed, she's still not done making other people's lives miserable, as I've heard from people that she's still stalking others. Please, please be careful with the people you surround yourself with, especially when your own friends have an off feeling about them. You never know who will take advantage of you in your lowest point of your life, so please be careful. Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed these stories. If you ever want to submit your own, you can do so at southerncannibal.com. Have a good night everyone, and remember, to always, stay home.